Hello everyone and welcome to the Five Branches Santa Cruz Herb Room. Today I'm going to show you a little bit around our herb room and also talk a little bit about the herbs that you're going to find here. So in these cabinets on my right, behind me and also in this refrigerator, there are 450 loose herbs and these loose herbs from the Chinese phar pharmacopoeia are going to become your very best friends from the beginning of your training until the end of your training and even beyond. In the Chinese pharmacopoeia there is much more than 450 herbs but uh, for what is available in the United States, uh, we have those 450 herbs. So in these cabinets, the herbs are organized in the drawers according to disease causes that can be found in the herbal pharmacopoeia books. They're usually big, thick books uh, that you're going to carry around and study. These uh, category begin from external pathogens that invades into the body all the way to more internal type of causes of disharmony within the internal organs that can give rise to diseases. I pulled out a few of these uh, drawers just to show you uh, some representative of the, the herbs. And when we say Chinese herbs, you always think that, okay, these are herbs. But as you can see, uh, it's not only herbs part, but you have here also uh, minerals and animal parts. So. If there are some people that are vegetarian, you need to take a note of that. So when you make your herbal prescription, you will not include animal parts in, those, uh, in this herbal formula. In Chinese medicine, we usually don't use single herbs. We many times, the majority of the formulas are a combination of a variety of herbs. Usually you have the major one, two or three herbs and then the other herbs are supporting, directing um, uh, the formula to where you would like to take it. So many of you probably um, saw this herb. I specifically did not turn it so you guys cannot see what's the name of this uh, twig, uh, but maybe you recognize it. Uh, this is actually the herb called Ma Huang and maybe you heard about it because it was in the news. Uh, as the horrible ephedra that can cause so many harmful things. Well, uh, in Chinese medicine, it's not the cause of heart failure, kidney failure or death because it is used correctly. Actually, ephedra, one of the things that it can do, it can raise the blood uh, pressure. And this herb was taken by different pharmaceutical or supplement companies. It was, uh, they took the active ingredient uh, out of the herb, not like the way we use it in Chinese medicine as the whole uh, twig that has thousands of chemical compounds. They concentrated the active ingredients uh, ingredient about 400 times than the recommended dosage according to Chinese medicine and they made it diet as diet pills for long-term uh, consumption and this is what caused it to uh, to make so many harmful uh, side effect which in Chinese medicine this herb is actually used for people who contracted a cold and they have some restricted bronchi and they are wheezing and this uh, herb has also the ability to 
open the lungs and reduce the constriction of the, the bronchi. And we have it here in two forms and hopefully you can see it through the video that one of them is more the herb, uh, the, the raw form of it and the other one a little bit stickier here it's honey fried. And what they found out is that if it's honey fried it's not as strong um, as it is when it's raw. So if somebody has borderline hypertension and you still want to use mahuang, then you can use the honey fried. So when you study the herbs at five branches, you don't only study their functions and indication, dosages, contraindication, etc., but you also learn how different ways to process them can affect uh, their um, um, properties. So we have twigs here. Here we have some uh, fruits. We have leaves. Uh, we have skin. This is actually the cicada uh, skin. You have uh, seeds. Uh, this is um, um, I think I would call it, uh, um, it's not a bark, but it's a slice of the herb. You have here a rhizoma. And then here you have some minerals uh, here. And you have it also in the form of shells. And here you have also some worms. These are actually used uh, for people that have a stroke or have some twitches um, and spasms like it can be Parkinson, Parkinson disease. This looks a little bit like a skin of a, of a snake, but it's actually the bark of one of the trees. And I just pulled it just to show you that it's, um, it can, it's, it's so interesting, the shape of it. So these are the herbs. We have also, of course, flowers here, and I pulled out the chrysanthemum uh, flower. So how do we use them? As I said, we usually create a formula uh, together a few herbs, and we have the measuring, uh, the Chinese way to measure things with the scale, and then you have to find your, um, we use chens, which translate each chen to um, three grams, so you have to go into the metric system. This is why we ask you to have some math. Uh, but we also have um, a normal scale, but this is the way I studied when I was here in school. So you measure the herbs according to the prescription of your teacher. And then sometimes, for example, just like this cicada uh, skin, you don't want the patient to have those herbs, the, the cicada skin in the, the formula, because if they're going to see, they may be grossed out. Uh, cicada skin is um, one of my teachers, I remember, um, Sharon Fung told us that it's very good if you have a hoarse voice and she used to give it to her friend that was an opera singer if she needed some reinforcement over there. So what you do, you take them and you can use the, the mortal to squish them a little bit more into a powder form and then you can put them into those cotton bags and tie uh, tight so that uh, the patient does not see exactly what you have there. Uh, we also have more advanced way to crash things. We have the um, magic bullet uh, to do that, but this was the traditional way uh, we used to use for these things. Sometimes you also want to put in these cotton bag also herbs that are uh, have some volatile uh, oils or if you want the patient to cook them longer. Sometimes minerals have to be cooked a little bit longer than the other herbs while um, some leaves, some aromatics may be uh, 
uh, added to the decoction a little bit to, more towards the end of the cooking process. Um, also we have here, I showed here seeds. These are relatively big seeds, but we have also tiny little seeds. And in that case, we want to put them in a small cotton bag so that it will not be so difficult to strain it out when you do the decoction. So when you're done preparing your herbal formula, you're going to put it in a bag. You're going to write the name of the patient and give this herbal formula for your patient with instructions of how to use them. Of course, when you're at the beginning stages, you're not going to do all these things uh, on your own, but you're going to do it with the supervision of your teacher and your uh, teacher assistant. Um, the formula when we make it is usually cooked sometimes once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times depending on how uh, we want to use it. So this is approximately the information for the loose herbs but uh, not always we can give loose herbs because uh, as you know, Chinese say that medicine that is good for the body is not always good for the tongue. So these things, if you have experience with getting some herbal decoctions yourself, you know that usually it's not exactly your go-to cocktail. And because of that, you may find that some patients, uh, in order to have better compliance, it's better to give them a more prepared form where it's just pills or capsules or other form of administration and not things that they have to uh, prepare themselves. Um, some people do like it because they like to see the herbs, they like to see what they're getting, they enjoy uh, the form of cooking. It is a process that can take about a couple of hours sometimes and you need to cook and to strain and to cook and to strain and some people uh, might forget about it. I got many times uh, phone calls of patients that ask for a refill of a formula just because they forgot it on the stove and it got burned. The benefit of using an herbal formula in a form of a decoction as opposed to a prepared form is that you can really tailor the herbal prescription for your patients, not only for their symptoms, but also appropriate to their constitution. You can change things, omit things, add things, change the dosage. So it can be much more effective for the patient. And Chinese medicine is truly an individualized type of medicine and we can see it with the herbs. We are now going to move into what we call the patent medicine. Hello again. So herbal formulations or herbal decoctions are usually the best way to go when it comes to Chinese medicine because you can tailor it for the patient symptoms as well as constitution but not always we can do what we think is the best for the patient. Sometimes it is because the patient does not like the taste of the herbal decoction. Sometimes they are going to be traveling. Sometimes we're talking about an elderly patient. So you want to use a different form of these herbal formulas. And I pulled out here on this table a sample of them for your reference. So uh, when we say, we call them patent herbs and when we say patent, they're not really patented like you know Western herbal, um, Western medicine drugs, but they are patented in the, the way that different doctors, ancient doctor wrote these prescriptions 
and then this would actually be the livelihood of their family. So the secret recipe would stay in that family and they would know how they need to change a little bit the herbs. So this is why we call them the patent medicine. And you'll be studying uh, at Five Branches later on how to prescribe these because the dosage can vary according to the age of the patient, their constitution, uh, and so on, and the form of administration, of course. So what do we have here? Uh, many patients come to seek our advice because they have various aches and pains. And you can see here, I pulled um, different companies that have patches that um, you can put on the, the area that is in pain. You have, uh, when it comes to aches and pains, um, you have here an aerosol that you can uh, put or the pain terminator, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to talk like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but this is um, a tube of cream, and you also have some oils that you can rub in the area of the pain. Um, we use also uh, moxa, moxa stick. Moxa is actually an herb called Artemisia vulgaris, or um, Aye, or the common name is mugwort, and you can take it and use it to warm uh, the area that you would like. It can be a general area or it can be a specific acupuncture point. Uh, so these are patches, these are creams and aerosol and um, oils or warming. Um, we have also syrups that we uh, give, so it's a formula with syrup. We have also pediatric lines. Um, these are more in the form of granules or tea bag. They have quite a bit of sugar or honey so that um, the child will be willing to, to drink this. Sometimes when it's a little baby, we would give it to the mother who would drink it and then it will go through the, um, to the baby with, uh, when they're nursing. We have here also pediatric tinctures. We have also tinctures for adults. And um, if your patient is a recovering alcoholic, definitely not uh, giving them tinctures that are alcohol based. Uh, here we have a formula, one of them is in a pill form, tea pills, and the other one it's the same herbal formula, but this one is in a form of granules and we have also powders. What this do is you, you take it according to the direction of the, the faculty, a teaspoon, two teaspoons, half a teaspoon, and then you mix it with warm water. So it's like having a decoction, but instead of having to actually cook it, it's already prepared, a prepared form um, for you. So um, we also have here, I pulled some candies that we have. This is herbal medicine for sore throat. I usually have also uh, Lockwood uh, candies for um, coughing that I many times keep in my pocket to give to the patients if I see that they're coughing wh while they're lying down. So you have a variety of ways that you can uh, give your patients. Sometimes because it's not fully tailored to your patient constitution and needs, you need to put together a couple formula for one condition. Whereas if you would have given a formula, it's just one formula because you can tailor it. So in these cabinets over here, we have all the various type of patent medicine that we give to our patients. Thank you.